Hi, welcome back to uh, another video in this series. Uh, so last video we talked about is the response, communication, and reporting. Now we're going to get into uh, vulnerability reported concepts. So we're going to do some log collection with Splunk and create a vulnerability report with Splunk as well. And we're just going to go over a few things, installing and configuring, collecting logs, uh, generating that report, uh, management reporting. And uh, so I'll, we'll get straight to it once this the server is up and running. All right, so now that we have the, um, the server up and running, let's go ahead and get started with the install for Splunk. So let's see here. <clears throat> Next, well, it's got to test screen first. Next, uh, domain, of course. Then we want Strader. Install and shall shouldn't take a should take just a few moments. All right, so finally got it uh, successfully installed, and now it should auto populate for us in the browser. Okay, let me go ahead and log in. I really should have done this before I zoom the camera. Never, of course. Got it. <clears throat> and then let's see. Actually, let me do that because it could change scrolling back and forth on that lab. All right, so uh, let's take a look. So, um, data. I'm going to do forwarding and receiving. There it is. All right, perfect. And then <clears throat> going to do at new. So we're going to give a port to listen to. Uh, we're going to do 9997. Let me hit save here. Now it's configured to listen for network traffic on that particular port. So the, now the Windows firewall needs to be configured to ensure the traffic can be received on, on the actual port. So I'm gonna uh, minimize this and uh, file uh, Windows, I mean, file explorer on Windows. Uh, so let's take a look at, uh, let's see, Windows firewall. Is. Take a look at our advanced settings. Inbound the rule. Of course, we want a particular port. I'm going to do 8089 actually and 997. All right, and then yes, allow the connection. Oops. And we're going to name it Splunk, of course. Not Splunk, that's something else. We're going to name it Splunk. All right, perfect. So now we're going to get into configuring a Splunk client. So to ensure the device on, in, on the network can send any log activity at all, the device needs to be configured to facilitate this. So, uh, so let's see, let's actually connect to here so we can actually have something else to work with should be done in just a moment so we can get into that file explorer to do what we need to do there. All right, so we're officially ready to rock and roll on the, um, how do we pivot it to the other server? So let's go ahead and open this up and pretty much same concept, same follow through for everything that we did on the prior, um, just not gonna customize those options there, but, um, we don't really need 
I guess we need something there. Uh, right now for the host name um should be should be um uh let's see All right. uh, Default, default, all around, default. All right, perfect. There we go. Should be done. And two shakes. All right. All right, so it's finally finished up. So the Splunk Universal uh, Forwarder was configured to forward the logs of, the, um, of this particular server device to the Splunk application which is configured on the prior uh, server. So the same steps can be performed on uh, another server as well, the server above this one in the NDC01 uh, to forward the log to the Splunk uh, app. So now we're just gonna collect logs using Splunk, right? So now that it's been installed, we're gonna pivot over to uh, Win11. So let's see, let's reopen Edge. And then actually we don't need to do that. <clears throat> uh, let's see for data. Actually, let me go back here. Um, should be. Let's see. So what I'm trying to do is take a look at just a few things here. For it to, to get forward data from the, the Splunk forwarder. So uh, let's see. I just started the launch. Actually, let me go back to that. <clears throat> All right, I, I saw what it was. It, it I had the the sub menu uh, not down there, but that's fine. So uh, let's click on add data here, and then should should get a few pop ups, but that's fine. We're gonna skip those. Then we're gonna forward data from the forwarder, and then we're gonna add this here. We're gonna name this exactly what it is. Uh, it said M01, All right, perfect. And then I can hit next here. Uh, local event logs, and then we should do application security and system. Uh, there it is. All right, perfect. Now, by clicking on the specify log events, I just moved it to the selected items window to the right. And now I can click review, right? And then let's see, everything, everything looks pretty good. All right, so I'm just gonna hit submit. I'm gonna start searching on the local uh, event logs input that I, I created <clears throat> and successfully created, I might add. So now it's going to be successfully imported into the Splunk app and additional devices can be added also uh, to have a central repository uh, to view all of the log files in one place. So I'm going to keep this open, right? And then move forward to the next task so we can um, move forward here. So I'm now going to create a vulnerability report with Splunk, um, which can be used to do a multitude of things, including generate a report that could be attached to a vulnerability report. So um, let's see. 
<sighs> okay, I'm on the right one here. So I'm going to select reports here. Actually, let me go back to here. And then, actually, actually, you know what? Let me go back. All right, perfect. So I'm going to take a look at the errors in the last 24 hours. And then I'm going to add the dashboard, right? Uh, <clears throat> now, a report of all the errors uh, were collected from uh, the the DM01 server uh, that's generated using the Splunk application. So this report could be attached to a vulnerability report as well, uh, supporting evidence if malicious activity was detected. So I'm going to name this dashboard ID um, acid and errors. <clears throat> Save. All right. Um, should I do a dashboard? Yeah, I'll do it just, just because. Now, different dashboards, dashboard reports can be created from the collected logs now, which the, any cyber professional can expect, right? So in this example in this lab, the dashboard view of the uh, errors that occurred in the last 24 hours on the um, on this device uh, has been created. So I'll do an export and I'll export as a PDF. Uh, yeah, there we go. Then I'll open file once it shows that it's fully downloaded. Yep, open the file, yep, new tab. So you'll see, we'll see all the errors here, all the errors. From the report. So the exported report now could be attached to a vulnerability report as supporting evidence after discovering a vulnerability or any malicious activity. So let me go back to the home page for Splunk and I'm going to uh, choose a home dashboard. All right. So we should do, let's see, the one I just did. Yeah. All right, then save and then it should search. We'll put up the data here. Perfect. So that's going to be on our dashboard. Now we go back to searching and reporting, and then we can actually. Thought I clicked it. All right, then the reports. And then it will still take us back to anything that we can search here as far as any reporting that we need to do. So several other uh, pre-populated uh, report templates are available that can be used to generate reports from the collected logs. All right, so uh, that'll be the end of this video for vulnerability reporting concepts. So just for a brief recap, as far as what we've done, we did some log collection with Splunk. We also created a uh, vulnerability report uh, with Splunk as well. And on the next video, we'll be doing, uh, which will be the last video for this playlist, uh, we'll be doing some vulnerability patching and attack surface management, and I'll see you there.